Uh, Rick in Ohio has some cat history. Hey, Rick. Hey, Dennis, how you doing today? Good. Uh, this sounds like a confession, like something a that's been haunting you. I'm, I'm, I'm just got out of the military. I come from uh, Vietnam, discharged, and less than 40 hours later, I'm in a house, former girlfriend. They invited me over to dinner with a family or whatever. So I'm, you know, I haven't been in the real world for a while, and my manners aren't too good to begin with. And, you know, I haven't been around civilized people for a while. So, Plus, her brother's name was Charlie, so you were yeah, a little something. freaked out. So, anyway, so I go over to the house. They're going to have dinner, a nice steak dinner, cookout, whatever. And uh, I'm, I'm a dog person. I'm not a cat person, mm-hmm. but they happen to have this black cat, this cold black cat, and it's skulking around, and, you know, I'm sitting there, and finally I said to the girl, I said, hey, what's with this cat? <laughs> and, you know, he's, he's whatever, and I said, I don't like cats a whole lot or whatever, so uh, I just kind of ignored it. So we go in to have dinner, and we're sitting there. I sit down at the table, and they have the steaks on the platter, and they're passing it around. This cat's skulking around the table yeah. and everything, and I get they hand me the platter. I put a steak on my plate and I pass it on. And I happen to look over to my left, and this cat's standing there staring at me. How many clicks out? He, he's he, he's eyeballing me. He's about four feet away. All right. And he takes one big leap, never makes a sound or whatever. He hops, hits my lap, and then winds up sitting on my di- standing on my dinner plate, eyeballing me, hissing. What do you do? I got a knife and fork in my hand, and I never said a word. I just stabbed the cat right through the neck. Nice. And he, you know, he was dead right there. And the mother and the girl start screaming, and the little brother, and he's, you know, everybody's in shock. So I figure, well, I just wore out my welcome. I get up to leave the table, and the father follows me to the front door, and he says, yeah, that's all right. He says, I hated that cat. <laughs> I never went back. Well, there you go, Ricardo. Thanks for sharing, my friend. It reminds you that you got a segue out of the knob. You know, you cannot get right into the uh, Grant Wood painting after you come back from the knob. Because your instincts are set at a different rate, right? Christian, of course. What happened to you? Did you fall on a bungee strick over there or something? You know, I'm just... Uh, that was one of the greatest stories we've ever had. The guy no, had no. the cat on his lap, and, no. and you were nowhere to be found. Yeah, that's I, I exactly... I that No, that's exactly where I want to be on a story like that. And all nowhere to be found. You have to segue out of the nom. You can't go nom, off-flight, dinner party, right? you got a cu- couple weeks home and toggle down with some Xbox or something. Anyway, um, cat got what it deserved, right? Sure sounds like it from where I'm not sitting. Say he had left that cat in power. And then the killing, the killing, uh, what was it called? The killing fields. Yeah, the cat kill, the feline killing fields, yes. The killing litter boxes happened. You gotta take that cat out. And he did. Not once again, is that a story you believe? No. Me <laughs> neither. But a good story nonetheless. And not good because a cat gets killed. I don't, I don't, I don't like cats, but I don't mind cats. But, uh, just the creativity that goes into these stories, I kind of like. 